Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a rainbow tree. For this project um, you're just going to need a piece of heavyweight cartridge paper. You don't really need good watercolour paper and later on in the video I'm going to be talking about why. Um, but what you do need is the separate colours. The beauty of this particular technique is that we're not going to actually mix any colours, we're going to use them straight from the tube and let the mixing happen on the paper. So here is my palette with the different colours in it. Lemon yellow, orange, bright red, permanent rose deep, dioxazine mauve, cobalt blue, Caribbean blue, chevening and green, and together they are going to make this wonderful rainbow of colours. So I've started by just quickly sketching in rough outline of a lollipop type tree, round area at the top and a, and a trunk. And now I'm going to be dropping in the colours, starting with the yellow and the orange at the bottom here. I'm mostly using the side of the brush to just drop random um, splotches of colour in and keeping it as loose and as open as possible. Lots of little gaps between the colours and where they meet, we're going to expect them to run a little bit. If you just sprinkle a few drops of water onto the paper before you start, this process is easier. I'm trying to vary my strokes as much as possible here, just keeping it open, perhaps more gaps at the top than there are further down. But really, there's not much to say about this. It's basically, as you see, just going from one colour to the next in a circular form. I'm using a fairly light piece of paper here, it's basically just cartridge paper, a very good quality drawing paper I suppose you would call it. And I did just want to say that I know most um, artists on here who talk about the requirements for learning to paint go on about how important it is to have really good quality paper, but I think that that can be really inhibiting sometimes because at the end of the day you want to be able to just play. So what you need to do in order to not bankrupt yourself is to find a good quality cartridge paper, heavy drawing paper, uh, one that will take a bit of paint without um, falling to pieces. And they do exist and they are an awful lot cheaper. I will put some links in the description below for paper that I suggest, which will give you the opportunity to just mess around like this. I'm doing this on just a piece of cartridge paper and it's perfectly fine and I could frame this. It's acid free, but it's just plain old cartridge paper, not copier paper. I'm not talking about the stuff you put through your printer. I'm talking about what they used to call cartridge paper because they used to use it to make cartridges to put into shotguns, believe it or not. So that's a sturdy kind of paper that you can actually paint on. So that's my tip for the day. Hope that's helpful. Check the description below for the names of a couple of manufacturers of the sort of paper I'm talking about. There'll be links there that'll take you to Amazon. And you can see now I've drawn a very thin trunk. This is a very stylized um, drawing, painting, and I'm not going for anything remotely resembling uh, reality, obviously, since I've chosen to do it as a rainbow. Um, but if you can't paint something unreal, I don't know what painting is for. I have no, no time for um, ultra-realistic watercolour. I think it, you might just as well use a camera. Why would you spend weeks painting something which looked exactly like a photograph? It's beyond me. I've never been able to understand that. Um, so, yeah, so this is an imaginary tree. It's got a lovely, thin, slim trunk, which I've just painted in using a very, very, very dark brown. That would be um, black mixed with sepia or something like that. And I'm just dropping in a few darker tones here now to increase the sense of three-dimensionality. Obviously you can see that the um, crimson, the red, has died back quite a lot, as many reds are prone to do. But I'm just touching up the oranges and the, and the reds right now. Trying not to interfere too much with what went before, I'm just kind of dropping into the same places as I did on the first go round. And this, this way the stronger colour will just blend into what's already there, which is obviously still wet. Um.
I always think uh, an impressionistic painting is improved by a few um, dots and dashes in the background, so I've just done a little bit of spatter there, but only a little bit, just a few drops there to, I like to think of it as connecting the painting to the paper, to the background, so it looks as if it's um, more at home on the, on the paper. And some blue ones up the top then, and some red on the left, and some, some yellow on the right, or orange. Now I'm just breaking the outside line of the tree to make it a little more um, airy. So that's the thing with the tree. You have to be able to see the sky through the branches, otherwise it's not serving its purpose as somewhere for birds to fly through. I'm really liking this uh, turquoisey colour that I've got there, which is Caribbean Blue by Old Holland. Second colour down just before, just after or next to the Cobalt Blue. I'm really thrilled with these paints actually. I'd waited a long time before I bought some new supplies and I kept going backwards and forwards. Should I get Daniel Smith? Should I stick with Winsor & Newton and Schmincke? Should I go for um, the French ones since I'm in France and, and get those? <coughs> but in the end I decided, I watched a video actually about how old Holland make their paint and I decided that they were a good, a good small company that seemed to care about what they were doing. So that's why I chose them in the end. They also have a little museum attached to their um, factory where they make their paints, where they've got a collection of all the very, very, very historic pigments that uh, the great masters used to use in their paints years ago, which is quite interesting. Um, just to mention here as well, while I think of it, that I have got a Facebook group which is growing. I think we've got something like 700 members now on the Facebook group called Learn to Paint Watercolour. And anyone who um, is interested and is a beginner or improver is very welcome to join that group. And uh, I put things on there sometimes which are interesting and everybody can share their paintings on there. Any paintings, doesn't have to be uh, worked uh, from one of my videos. I'm very happy for you to use it as a place to share and chat about your paintings as you go along. But I will be obviously mentioning the videos that I put up on the Facebook group, trying to encourage people to join, to join me here on YouTube, as I am the new girl on the block and still trying to build up my presence here. So anyone who subscribes to me on here, it's uh, very welcome. And we do have a competition going as well. If you leave a comment on any one of my videos that goes up this month, you might win um, a prize, which will be uh, an original painting by me, not a print, an original painting by me. So I hope you'll think about entering that competition and I look forward to receiving your comments. So there we are, there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed watching me do that and do give it a try. Just remember one thing, that is to use clean colors don't mix them, just use them straight from the tube or from your palette and let them mix a little bit on the paper and that way you'll get a lovely fresh pretty effect like this. So thanks very much for being here this afternoon and I hope you have a lovely evening and I look forward to seeing you here again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll say bye bye for now. Bye bye everyone, bye bye.